here we are, right in the middle of the pandemic, right in the middle of all kinds of experiences that we've all had together. And uh, it's been crazy, it's been crazy. Um, and one of the things that I think about more than ever now, we think about how, you know, in terms of mental illness, how it was before COVID. And now I'm thinking a lot about how, it's, how it is now, how much worse it is and how much more um, we need to be able to get the message out of people talking, of people connecting, of people showing love and unity. You see that meme all the time where it's like, be careful what you say to someone because you don't know what they're going through. And we need to be even more careful now. And that's kind of been really my message lately. I, I want to share with you something. This is very interesting, right? This isn't my new accessory, right? Who would have thought, right, a year ago that our main accessory would be our cell phone, our keys, and our mask, right? It's crazy, crazy, crazy. So, but I just had this interesting experience. My, um, my uncle, he's in Nigeria, he lives in Nigeria, and uh, he, uh, he uh, Skyped me the other day because he wanted to see how I was doing, you know, and he's got this, of course, strong African accent, and he calls me Tunde, so my African name is Tunde, or my full name is Alexander Baba Tunde Abayomi Boye, but you can call me Al. <laughs> So anyway, he'd say to me, Tunde, how is everything going in America? And I said, oh, you know, everything is fine. You know, everyone's just trying to stay positive and we're trying to, you know, just, just, uh, just pull our way through it, you know? And I remember him saying to me, are you wearing your mask? I said, uh, yes, sir. And he says, where is it? Go and get your mask. I want to see it. I was like, okay. So I'm running around. Then I get my mask and I show it to him. And he says, good. And then he said to me, do you know why you have to wear a mask? I said, um, because of COVID? He says, yes, but there's another reason. I said, oh, okay, what is it? He said, we have two ears and one mouth, and we are told to cover our mouths. He said, that is God trying to tell us something. He's telling us to shut up and listen. <laughs> and you know what? I remember thinking, whoa, that's deep, bro. I can't help but th to think that there's some kind of symbolism in that. And I think more than ever, we need to listen to each other. We need to listen to each other and what we're going through. I gotta tell you one thing. Everyone within the sound of my voice watching this, I just wanna congratulate you. I just wanna congratulate you the fact that you are living through a pandemic, guys. This is crazy. and. One of the things is when I see people who are still, you know what I mean, all of us, we're just going through this together. We're all in the same boat. You know what I mean? We're all in the same ship and we're all just trying to get through and help each other out. So I've been thinking about that a lot. There's a song that probably for the last year I've been singing, it's called Still Breathing. And during COVID, it's taken a whole new meaning, right? It's <laughs> Still Breathing. Um, but I wanted to share this song with you now and, um, it's one of my favorite songs to sing right now because it always just brings back home the fact that the most important medicine is love. Um, so I'm going to sing it for you right now. Here we go. Stretched out like a rubber band, stressed out like a working man. Oh, all I need is a helping hand from someone who loved me. Best friends with anxiety, no one even checks on me. No, a little love is medicine from someone who cares. I thought that I was always missing something, but I found it. The moment I inhaled a bit of silence that surrounds me, and I'm still breathing. I'm still breathing. Yeah. Still breathing. Still breathing.
I'm still breathing. 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 Thought that I was always missing something. In the moment I had held a little silence. That surrounds me. I'm still breathing. Still breathing. Uh, still You know, uh, lately I've had this really, really strong feeling of how important it is to check yourself. You know, you, you know, you hear on those rap songs, it's always talking about how you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? But I'm kind of dating myself. That was like in the 80s. That was always a big thing. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, you know? And it's that whole thing, meaning basically... You know, know where you are and 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 be aware of it before it goes way too far and it's hard to control it. And um, you know, I have I have seen the effects within myself and with other people when we let our thoughts run wild and let our thoughts negative thought and then another negative thought and then another one and then another one. And then sometimes it's just natural though, right? It's not this thing where we're like, oh, you're so negative. Sometimes it's just natural thoughts. But as it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, then it's harder to come back from. It's like, I remember, I was, it's like I saw this guy that was talking about this experiment with water. So if you get a bucket of water and you just one drop, right? In this bucket of water, and it's like you can pick up a bucket of water when it's empty, an empty bucket, you can pick it up with just one hand, right? But after a while, it's like you just one drop. It can be just one drop. Blip, 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 and nothing. You can still pick it up. Blip, blip, blip. After two hours, three hours, blip, blip. You can still pretty much pick it up. And then it gets to a point where you cannot pick up that bucket anymore because it's way too much water in there. And the water has just brought, brought the weight and it's so heavy. And no matter how much you try and pick it up, you just can't. It's hopeless. And that's kind of what mental illness, it feels like to me. That's how it's, it's felt that I've had those experiences where it's like someone can say, oh, just stop being negative. Just wake up this morning and have good food. It's too late sometimes because it's so heavy. The weight of that continual thought after thought after thought after thoughts that's been negative, that's been negative, and we didn't realize it. We just thought it was just an average thing. It wasn't a big deal. And then it gets to the point where it becomes this stronghold and you need more than just positive thoughts to get rid of it. That's when you need everything right whether it's therapy whether it's medicine whatever is needed whether it's a you know um uh people that's around you the love the goodness and kindness of people it's like no one thing it's like everything you got to throw everything at the kitchen sink because i've noticed that for some people um and this is one thing that i really want people to know and that's what i love about hope for utah and 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 the hope squad is that one of the things that they always do is tell people that it is okay to not be okay. This is where we're at. Okay, this is where we're going to start. Now let's see how, let's try and move forward. From however dark it is, even one step forward and then five steps back, that's still four steps. That's still improvement, right? And because sometimes we beat ourselves up so much 
We compare ourselves to each other. We look at people's pimpstagrams, right? Because that's really what it's called. That's really what we're doing, right? We look at people's pimpstagrams and we compare ourselves, our pimpstagrams to other people's pimpstagrams. And they've got all these filtered pictures and everything that they've taken years or, well, hours, you know, you know, kind of exaggeration, but you know what I mean? To work on all the filters and everything. And then so now we're comparing our worst to their best. That's an impossible. It's hard. To, how can you keep up with that? You know, so it's been really, um, I, I look at, I try and write down things that has helped me, even if it was just one day, one thing that I did that all of a sudden made me feel a little bit better. Even if it was just like a small thing, and I try and write it down and use that to be able to share with people. And I'm like, hey, I got this other idea. I tried this and it was so cool. Like I wrote this journal one time and I just decided to write everything that was positive. And even if I couldn't find it, I would dig deep. Like, I'd be like, I didn't pick my nose today. Like, anything. You know, it was like, you know, it could be the simplest, the dumbest things. I'm telling you, at this point, the difference from being alive and not being alive, whatever it takes, however big, however small, it all makes a difference. It all makes a difference. So my message is, Hold on to the small things. Celebrate the smallest victories. Like, I didn't get up this morning, but I didn't sleep longer than I thought that I was gonna, or I woke up a little bit earlier. I woke up two minutes earlier than I did before in my depression, you know? I got up and I went downstairs and I went outside, and then I went back to bed. That is huge progression from getting up and then turning over and going back to sleep again. So it's just like celebrating the small victories. Um, there is this story of, um, uh, you know, those bamboo shoots, right? The bamboos. Um, and I want to relate it to like bamboos and even palm trees. Like one thing that I studied up about palm trees <coughs> <coughs> And have you noticed you hardly ever see a palm tree uprooted? Like you, you, you'll see hurricanes and stuff like that. And you'll always see those normal trees. You can even sometimes those big old oak trees, they're just boom, falling over, just uprooted. Palm trees, the, you, don't, you don't see them uprooted. And one thing I've noticed is that these palm trees, they're so flexible that during the wind, they bend, but they never break. They just bend. But they never break. And the other thing as well is that they have these deep roots and the roots are so deep and go so deep down into the ground that when the storms come, when the troubles come and just all the turmoil, that it's, they're still affected, but they bend, but they never break. And I want to liken that to us as human beings, that if there's a way that we can find and spend the most amount of our life and our times building roots, deep roots of self-love and deep roots of just um, understanding and, and deep roots of just even just joy, happiness, just jokes. You know what I mean? I have a friend of mine, he just got out of prison. I remember I went to visit him and he was watching cartoons at house. He's 65 years old. I'm like, bro, you're watching freaking cartoons. Why are you watching? What? And he said, Alex, if you've seen what I've seen, if you've been through the darkness that I've been and you don't want to go back, I have to find the most cheesiest ways of bringing joy back into my life. Even if it's watching cartoons. That hit me so hard. It wasn't anything big that he was trying to do to change. Just something small as watching a three minute cartoon. That was powerful to me. What he was trying to say is, look, I'm still going through it. My goal is I just want to bend instead of breaking. And so I want to share this song with you. And it's called Bend Not Break. Hope you like it. Before you go, can I ask you a question? When's the last time you thought life's worth living? You may think 
There's only one way out Can't see beyond the way you feel right now But if you just bend and not break If you just bend and not break Oh, at least not today. Ooh. Now I know that this permanence is tempting. That even on a good day, life feels empty. But someone's gonna. So just recently, I looked up the word contagious in a dictionary. And here's what it says. Contagious, capable of being transmitted by bodily contact with an infected person or object, carrying or spreading a contagious disease or tending to spread from person to person. I want to share with you something that is way more contagious than COVID. And that's love. And that's understanding. That is community spirit, laughter, joy, courage, life. And you know, we are all carriers of that. And if we spread that, I believe that it makes everybody's life individually so much better. And so that's been my goal lately. I'm going to make a t-shirt, you know what I mean? It's like, COVID sucks, but my friends don't. <laughs> I actually have one. You can get it. AlexBoy.com. AlexBoy.com. All right. Anyway, you can get those t-shirts. But <laughs> but it's funny because it's it's uh, it really um, has helped me to put things into perspective. We are carriers of so many beautiful things. We are carriers of so many beautiful gifts. And the gifts that we have, whether it's a gift of laughter, joy, doesn't belong to us. And it never works until we're sharing it with somebody else. And more than ever now, we need to be carriers of that. I just want to 
encourage everyone out there that's listening. I just want to tell you, I'm grateful for you. I love you, whether you know me or not, because I want to be a part of making love contagious again. Blessings to you all, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much. Peace!